Hi, my name is Hal Schmidt, and I'm the director of the Left Institute. I want to take a few minutes this morning to share with you one of the most requested techniques we have here at the school, and that is, how do I use Photoshop to create the optical illusion that I have spent the time and money and actually matted my print before, before framing? Well, there's a real simple way to do that. You can see my final product here using just my background layer and then a, a couple of other layers. And you know, I think you'll find this technique very, very effective. We actually have a few of these prints hanging in our gallery here. And it, it's interesting to watch people come into the studio and, and look at them and try and figure out exactly how we did this matting. But we didn't use matting at all. It's strictly Photoshop. So let's take a look at the technique. I'm going to first start that by stepping back in my history and going to the simple image. Now this is just a brown pelican starting his breeding plumage uh, back in January here in Morro Bay. But getting ready to print this, we'll say and we'll assume that I have done my finishing touches. That is, I have sized the image, I've sharpened the image, and, and I'm preparing to print. To create this matting technique, the first step that we recommend is you create a new layer. And the new layer is accessed by hitting the new layer icon down at the bottom of the layers panel. A good habit pattern to get into anytime you make a new layer, go ahead and rename that layer. For this, we're going to call it stroke. What a stroke is, is just a line around something. We like to take a very simple one pixel stroke or line and put it around our entire image to separate it from the canvas extension we're about to do. In order to stroke something, you have to have either pixels or something selected. Since there are no pixels on our blank stroke layer, we're going to select all by hitting Control A on a Windows machine or Command A on the Mac. We see the marching ants surround the entire image. Now it's time to put a stroke on it. Go up into the menu bar to Edit, Stroke, and then into Stroke Width, type 1. And for stroke color, if you're not seeing black right now, click in the color swatch and choose black. You could either choose black by coming down to your red, green, and blue and typing in zero, or just drag your color picker to the lower left corner and make sure you're seeing at least two or less, at least that is if you're using a Canon printer. Hit OK, and then back into our stroke dialog, we need to make sure the location is inside. If it's center or outside, we're not going to see the full effect of our stroke. We hit OK and then deselect by Control D on Windows or Command D on a Mac. We don't think that much really has changed there because we only created a one pixel stroke. But if you toggle off your, your layer visibility icon, you will see that there is a small stroke around your entire image, once again serving to contain that image from the canvas extension we're about to do. To bring your canvas out, come up to the Image option, come down to Canvas Size, and make sure Relative is checked. Inside Relative, pardon me, with Relative checked, then go to Width or Height, and end up with, it's going to be dependent upon your overall image size. This is a fairly large uh, image of, of the Pelican, so I'm going to do an overall canvas extension of Width 2 and Height 2, effectively adding an inch to each side. For the canvas extension color, make sure you have white. Now white is my background color, so I'm just going to leave this here and click OK. Now, As I do that, notice that one inch of canvas has been extended around the entire image of the pelican. To complete our effect, we need to add another layer. So come down to the new layer icon, and once again, if we create a new layer, we want to rename it. So I'm going to call this the matte effect. On our matte effect layer, we're once again going to create a stroke. So in order to stroke something on a blank layer, we must select it. Control A or Command A to bring up our marching ants. Back up to stroke, so edit, stroke, and this time I'd like you to select something anywhere from about 20 to 60 pixels depending upon the size of your image. The more you play with this, the more you're going to figure out exactly what works for you. I'm going to go with 40 pixels today just so we can see very easily this effect. The stroke color of black is not what we want to use. Instead, if you click in your color swatch, we bring up the color picker. 
Now you could pick any color of the rainbow as we have available to us here, but a great technique is to actually take your color picture picker into the image and find a color that you would like to use as your matting. Try and find something that's going to be a little bit on one of the, the lighter tones or a little bit higher luminance value because we're going to have a shadow effect show up on that color. So I'm going to grab one of the blues. I, I don't like that one, so I'll go a little bit lighter. That looks good. Click OK. Back to my stroke dialog. Ensure once again we have inside and hit OK. As I hit Control D or Command D on the Mac to deselect, we now have an outer stroke that is comp or filled with the exact same color we have inside our image. To give the optical illusion of a matte, we're going to add a layer style. And before I do that, I'm just going to zoom in real quick so we can see the upper right corner of our image and the effect itself. To add a layer style, there are a couple different ways to do it. One of the most common is to drop down and hit the FX button at the bottom of your layers panel. But I find what's more efficient is just to double click into one of the empty areas of your active layer. And that brings up our layer style. The style you want to add onto this is inner shadow. So click on the words inner shadow. If you just click onto the checkbox, you will add an inner shadow, but you won't be able to modify the effect. So we recommend here clicking on the word inner shadow, which brings up all of the dialog to change the shadow itself. What we want to play with here are really four things. First of all is the angle of the light, and then we'll look at distance through size. Angle of the light determines where the shadow is going to fall. Distance, as I move the distance slider, how far out does this shadow affect? And then choke affects the hard edge of a shadow. So the more I move the choke to the right, the harder edge of the shadow, or the further the harder edge of the shadow comes out. Size affects the softness of that shadow. And you can play around with each of these three to determine exactly what it is you want. What I like to do on something like this to really create the optical illusion is that when you have an image that would be suspended just a couple millimeters over matting, the shadow is going to be relatively hard edged. So I don't like to take the size out too much more than 10 pixels. In fact, in most cases I'll keep it around 7 to 8. And give myself just a little bit of additional distance and the choke uh, once again, somewhere for me in this image, right around 7%. Now, you can change the angle of light if you want. It's something you can play with. I'm not going to show doing that here. So we have changed our distance through size, created a inner shadow inside of our stroke. Once you have that, just click OK. I'll bring the full image back. We can start to see this optical illusion taking effect. To totally finish it now, we just need to add a little bit more canvas. To do that on our matte effect layer, go up to Image, Canvas Size, and for, to make this relatively even, I'm going to add just about, just over an inch and a half to both width and height. Once again, ensuring that the canvas extension color is white, in this case my background color, I click OK. Fitting this on screen, I see now that I have created a nice optical illusion that my image is somehow there floating on top of this black, or pardon, not black, but blue matting, with a great drop shadow showing. It's very, very effective. Why I like to do this on different layers is that I can turn the effect off and remove it totally if I want to with, by changing, changing the matte effect layer visibility icon. And I can also remove that inner stroke if I decided I didn't want it around the image itself. A question we often get is how do I change the color of my stroke if I determine I don't like it? Well, the easiest way to do that is once again to launch your layer style dialog box on the matte effect. To change the color of your stroke, just come down and click on the words color overlay. And then we can change our color overlay to anything we would like, whether it's from our color picker here or back into our image. 
So we think using a couple different layers gives you a lot of flexibility, keeping things non-destructive and reversible. Uh, there are a bunch of other ways to do this because this is Photoshop, but this is a technique we push here. Hopefully this uh, quick blurb has been uh, useful to you. If you have any other questions, comments, or concerns regarding this, please feel free to give me a call at the uh, LEP Institute, or you could shoot me an email uh, to discuss the technique or perhaps to get some written instructions, and that is hal at lepphoto.com, uh, three Ps there. Thanks a lot. Have a great day.